All right. Well, it is uh, the top of the hour. I see some of you guys are are streaming in and and uh, logging in. I'm going to give everybody a, a chance to uh, to get settled. And and so if you're just joining us, uh, go ahead and grab you a, a cup of coffee or water and and uh, let's get settled in. And um, I'm really uh, really excited about the message today and and uh, about bringing you the information today. So. Um, let's just go ahead and give everybody a, uh, a minute to log in and, and um, get settled. Um, let's see here. Awesome. Just wonderful. And uh, if you guys open the chat window, you can see uh, my, uh, my partner in crime, Dave, is in there and he's a uh, He's welcoming everybody to the session in there. And, and uh, just to let you guys know that um, if you have any tech support questions, if you're having trouble with the audio or the video or something of that nature, you can write in the chat and, uh, and Dave will do his best back there to, to get it all squared away. I, I know that um, <laughs> with uh, everything that's gone on over the last, uh, last couple of years, we've all gotten pretty proficient at, at Zoom and uh and and work in these different platforms but uh if you do have any problems please put put uh, any tech support questions in the chat and ask dave and we'll get it squared away um let's give everybody a few more minutes i'm, I'm going to give it to about uh, let's just give it about two more minutes and let everybody log in um if you are getting settled in um uh once again tech support questions will go in the chat if you have a question for me uh, please uh, put it in the Q&A section. Uh, I'm going to go through that. I, I will be asking some questions and asking people to put stuff in the chat and in the Q&A as we go through the session today. Uh, but uh, if you have uh, any questions for me um, for the end and, and you'd like for me to answer it or I didn't get to something, please put that in the Q&A section um, so we can go through that. Let's see here. Also, if you have a, a, a problem with the view, like I'm going to stop this right now. And, and uh, if you guys have a, a, an issue with the view and, and you're seeing different things, if you go to the top right part of your screen and click view, you can go to gallery view, you can go to speaker view, um, you can change it around to full screen if you'd like. Um, I, I tend to find that it works pretty well in speaker view. Um, but uh, yep, that's uh, you can play around with that and toggle that. Um, so let's see what time oh, we got. To, it's about time to get started. We'll go ahead and roll in. Um, all right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my uh, my screen with you guys, and I'm going to go back and forth today from the the presentation, the slide presentation, to me talking, and and vice versa. I, I really want to invite you all to be a part of this. Uh, because this is a message that um, I've been crafting for uh, my time in behavioral health care, my time in, in substance use treatment uh, in the industry. Uh, I've really been uh, either questioning this, talking about this, crafting the message, and uh, now I'm really excited over this next year to present about this and, and share, um, share on it. So uh, the topic that we're going to go over today is this idea of marketing magic. Um, and it really does hit at the root of uh, what we do in behavioral health care, specifically substance use treatment. Um, so uh, just real quick, uh, my name is Glenn Hadley. I'm the Senior Vice President of Strategy at Dreamscape Marketing. Um, I, uh, um, I, you know, I do want to talk just real quick at, at, at Dreamscape just to qualify us for what we do. Like we've been around since 2005. We've been around forever in the industry. Um, you've seen our, our websites, our marketing platforms all over the place. We really cut our teeth in this industry um, and are one of the few places that have the data to support the information that we're showing. Um, I, I'm really excited to bring this to you. We have a full list of services. This is not a commercial. This is just to qualify us as an entity um, that whenever I'm speaking about this, this is not something that I'm, I'm a uh, throwing out there as as we guess, or or this is from a, a place of experience and knowledge that we know. Um, so a little bit about me. So once again, my name is Glenn Hadley. Um, I'm the vice president of strategy here at Dreamscape, and 
and specifically in the uh, behavioral health care arena. Um, you know, I, I've done a lot of things in this space and anywhere from, uh, you know, building alumni programs, doing business development, um, uh, st doing startups in, in substance use and, and trauma resolution. Uh, also working, uh, I've had a caseload before, um, working in direct care, uh, I've put on a number of um, conferences in this space. Um, and I'm sure that we've met somewhere along the way. Uh, and if we haven't, then I look forward to meeting you uh, going forward. But um, I, I will tell you, as I've, I've gone on and, and just really um, uh, asked questions and, and dug into this thing, um, uh, it's become apparent that we're missing something and I, I'm gonna dig into that. Uh, I, I will just tell you briefly uh, that I, I did, just like most of us, um, I got into behavioral health care through um, a personal experience door um, that uh, I, um, uh, I, was a, I started off as a um, professional tennis player whenever I was younger and, um, uh, and went through that, uh, that interesting life of growing up on a tennis court, hitting a little yellow tennis ball. And then um, after that, uh, I went into a whole bunch of other different, um, different side jobs and, and careers and paths. And, and I, I've done a whole lot of things, always searching and trying to find that, which uh, uh, would really define who I am. Um, and so it's been an interesting ride. It, it, it definitely, uh, uh, I, I don't know if it qualifies me for much, but um, I, I don't know too many people out there that, um, that went down the road of professional sports and then got into, uh, I, I got into the music scene and, and started throwing uh, uh, concerts and raves and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, putting on events. And, and then uh, I did a lot of, I was actually in the Navy and was an engineer in a nuclear submarine. So um, I, I've done a lot. I've been in coaching and, and uh, been, been around in a lot of different avenues. And, and I think that um, in, in all of those places, uh, I, I picked up little bits along the way and, and little um, pieces of what uh, the goals were and, and the missions were in each of those things. And, and I try to bring that to my experience here. And, and uh, um, I'm also a person in long-term recovery. And, uh, and, and that's really, that was my journey into this space is uh, I had my own personal recovery experience and, and um, I was a person of means. I had, uh, I had a lot of, uh, of, resources at my disposal. And I had no idea that this world existed. And so uh, I'm personally, I'm very passionate about this space, about behavioral health care. Uh, I'm very passionate about what we do here. Um, and uh, one of the reasons why it means so much for me to be working in the, the digital marketing space specifically is that uh, whenever I went through my own experience, um, you know, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't necessarily reach out to people. Um, I, I went online and searched for the services that I need. And, and I was very fortunate to have found a place through Google, just like, uh, most people, I think we, um, uh, 86% of all searches, uh, for, um, for treatment start on Google. Uh, and mine was the, the exact same. I, I'm one of those people. Uh, I knew nothing about, uh, behavioral health care. I knew nothing about substance use treatment. Um, and, uh, and, and I went and searched for it and found it, um, and was very fortunate. And so I'm passionate about, um, about this message. I'm passionate about what we do. And I'm, I'm very passionate about, um, sharing this with, um, with people. So, uh, it's a little bit easier, uh, to enter this world. So that's, um, a little bit about me and, and we're going to talk about, uh, marketing magic and, and what that means. Um, so. Why? Why are we marketing magic? Um, why do I say that? Um, and it's uh, it, it really is interesting when you ask ask people what we do. Right? Has anybody ever asked you what you do? And we start to talk about the modalities, and we start to talk about the the nuts and bolts of it. But does it really express what we do? Um, and uh, I, I think we kind of missed the boat on that. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of the problem that we have in addiction treatment and why it's magic. Uh, and then we're gonna go into um, the solutions for this. So once again, um, if you're just joining us, make sure that if you have any tech support questions uh, to go ahead and put those in the chat. Um, also uh, feel free, I, I like to put this out here. 
feel free that um, if you want to put where you're watching from and, and chat with each other, I, I really would like for this to be a discussion um, and, and an interaction here um, because I, I do believe that together we can kind of help make this a, a cohesive industry and, and really drill down into exactly what we do. So I, I would love to see some interaction in the chat um, and make sure that you're asking your questions of me in the uh, Q&A section. All right, so why are we marketing magic and what is the problem? So uh, I'm going to go over uh, some of these things here. So um, here's, uh, here's kind of the problem as I, as I see this. Um, whenever we start talking about uh, what we do, um, uh, addiction uh, it, it is at its essence, it's a, it's a brain disease, right? And we're talking about... Um, these, uh, these neural pathways and how they've been hijacked and how um, in each of our patients as they come in, um, we, you know what we're talking about. Whenever we first see a client that walks in the door, um, you can look at it and talk with, talk with them and you can see it that, that the brain just isn't, it's not there. They're, they're trying real hard, but they're still, it, the, the neural pathways are being hijacked and they're not as defined. They're not getting to the frontal cortex. And so um, that's really, that, that's what we're talking about. And, and whenever you, um, when you speak to somebody uh, on the streets, when you talk to a mom, when you talk to uh, a prospective client, when you talk to even like friends or family and, and, and we start talking about addiction, um, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge talking about this, um, this brain disease. It's a challenge talking about the neural pathways. Um, and, and what we do in addiction treatment and what we do in therapy, what we do in behavioral health care in general is, is we really do work in that to help that um, the repairing of the neural pathways take place. So that, that's a problem talking about that because whenever you're out there and talking to, um, to the general public and you start to talk about this brain disease, and the neural pathways and, and, and how we, we treat that and how we're affected with that. You see their eyes glaze over. It's, it's, it's a challenge getting there. So um, that's a problem. Also uh, in our industry, whenever you talk to people um, about what we do, you're gonna get a hundred different responses um, even within the industry. And so uh, I'm gonna tuck that away. We're gonna do that one um, here a little bit later, but that's, you know, that's one of the problems is we're talking about this ethereal brain disease and we're talking about a process where the, the neural pathways can repair and get back to the frontal cortex where a person can make a decision and not a reaction. So that's a challenge, right? That's a challenge to talk about that. Um, let's see. Another thing is that uh, in this, we have so many pathways to recovery. Right there is. Um, I'll give you an example. Whenever um, uh, when I was playing tennis for a living, uh, it, as often happens with us, is we run into injuries. Right, and um, one of the challenges that I had was uh, I uh, I tore up my knee and I had to go to um, uh, a knee surgeon uh, to go have my knee repaired. And uh, we went in there and we talked about the procedure, what was going to take place. He outlined the procedure. Um, I signed off on it. We went through the procedure and I had a dedicated um, rehabilitation program afterwards to rehab my knee. It was very cut and dry, very black and white. Um, and what I learned after the fact is that there are about three different ways to do that surgery, but they all lead to the same place. But, but realistically, you're going to get about three different procedures. Um, I could understand that and I could wrap my head around that. Um, in what we do in substance use treatment and in the behavioral health care field as a whole. Uh, it's not that cut and dry. Um, there are many different pathways or doorways into uh, recovery, uh, whether it's um, we're talking about SUD recovery, whether we're talking about trauma recovery, PTSD, um, uh, codependency, whatever uh, personal recovery a, a uh, person is going to enter into, there are many doorways for that. And, and this can be very confusing. Um, and for those of y'all that are tuning in to, to really dig into the marketing, this, this is extremely important whenever it comes to marketing to understand this. We really do need to, uh, to explain the different pathways into a recovery journey. 
um, because from the outside looking in, from the, the prospective client or the client family, whenever they look at all of the different programs and all of the different uh, experiences, um, it can be very confusing. I mean, quite honestly, even inside the industry, think about all of us that live in, and, and breathe and eat and sleep in this space, like how many uh, different pathways into our world there are. And, and, and yet they, you know, we don't, we can't encompass all of them when we live here. Um, and it's extremely confusing for, uh, for the client, the client family. So I'm going to dig into um, the solutions around that, but that's also a, a definite problem. Um, I was, uh, I was at uh, a conference that I put on in, in Florida uh, a few years back, and there was a panel discussion going on with, a, um, uh, with local law enforcement. And the, uh, the representative from the local law enforcement was talking about his, his own personal journey and acceptance of a certain pathway into recovery. He was, um, he was very much on the medical model side, very strict, very rigid in that. And there was a facility that opened up um, in, his, um, in his county that had, uh, as part of their therapeutic modality, they offered um, a sweat lodge. And they had it, um, it was uh, supervised uh, by a, a fully licensed um, therapist. Um, but he really struggled with that, um, seeing that as a real, um, uh, a real therapeutic modality that he could get behind until he went to go experience it. Um, and then he went and had an experience with that therapist and in that group and, um, and now is a, a big proponent of it. And, and it just really, whenever he was up there speaking about that, uh, it was one of the things I picked up that there are many doorways into this world. There's many paths into this world um, and there's not one that's right or wrong um, and, and I think that we need to uh, educate the clients and client families and the general public that just because one doorway looks different doesn't mean that it's wrong. Um, but that is a challenge for us. Uh, the doorways don't all look the same. Um, let's see. All right. Another problem. All right. This is my favorite. This is the uh, what do we sell? So. Um, I whenever I entered into this industry. And, and I started to, um, uh, started to explore what this world was about. I, all I had was my experience. I didn't have um, a lot behind me at that point in time. And so I, I did what I, um, what I did whenever I was playing tennis and being coached and all that is I, I went and asked questions. And um, I said, so what is it? What, what do we do here? And, uh, and I got... I mean, I mean, a million different answers. And so here's what I want to do. I want to have an exercise uh, with you all. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes and I'm going to ask you, the audience, what do we sell in substance use treatment? And no matter where you're, you're sitting currently, if you're a, a, a referral source, if you're inside the facility, if you are a doctor, if you are um, someone outside of it, I really want your um, your answer. So if you could put this in the chat, um, I would like to take them. I'm going to take a couple minutes and I want everybody to put in there. Um, answer the question. What do we sell in substance use treatment? What do we sell? I love it. Keep them coming. I really appreciate you guys participating in this and, and uh, uh, please continue. Put that, uh, what do we sell? What do we sell in substance use treatment? Some great answers. I love the answers. I'm going to give us another minute. Um, let's keep digging into this. What do we sell? Uh, and I'm going to go through after this and I'm going to read 
uh, some of the answers and, and, uh, and then we're gonna chat about it. Good stuff. Keep going. 30 seconds left on this. Sorry, that's the coach and me coming out. I get a stopwatch in my hand, and before you know it, I'm back there reverting. 30 seconds, let's go. <laughs> I love the answers. Thank you guys so much for participating and, and, uh, and putting them in there. Um, I love it. All right, so. I'm gonna read out some of the answers and, and uh, for the audience that, that maybe is gonna watch this on tape that doesn't have access to the chat. But um, I, I will tell you, these are, uh, these are the answers that I, I tend to get whenever I ask this question is, what do we sell in substance use treatment? We sell hope, recovery solutions, hope, I love it. Life change and recovery from a chronic condition, yes. Relationships, healing sources, a truly healthy society where addiction and mental health care are unified to make lives better. Hope, definitely, plus health and wellness. Hope, and hopefully a path, uh, a new way of living. Freedom, freedom from active addiction. I uh, love it. Recovery in a physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual sense. Resilience, trust to start a new life, a roadmap, hope, safe space, and opportunity. Uh, I really appreciate everybody putting that out there. Um, and, and this is why I have this listed under the problem is that we're, we're sitting here today in, in this webinar and uh, we're all uh, somewhat tied to this field, somewhat tied to this industry and somehow, and, and we're, not, uh, we're not in the outskirts uh, seeing this for the first time. We live in this world. And, and yet look at all the different answers we have uh, whenever I ask, what do we sell? That is a problem. Um, they're, they're great answers. Uh, and here's my hope is that my hope is that we can come together uh, as an industry, as a field, um, as a practice, we can come together uh, to really clarify this answer. Um, so whenever somebody asks us, what do we sell? We have one answer. Um, but that, the, all the different answers is, uh, that's a problem. Also, I would throw out, this as part of the problem, um, is, uh, if I'm going back through this list, um, how do we quantify hope? How, how do we measure hope? How, how do we, um, how do we judge the efficacy of a treatment program if we're basing what they sell on as hope? Um, that's a real challenge. How, how do we judge the quality of their relationships if that's what we're selling is relationships? Um, how do we quantify a new way of living? How do we quantify resilience? How do we measure it? And, and I have a, a, an even more challenging question. How do we get reimbursed for hope? You guys start to see the problem? See, this is my, um, this is my belief, and this is where, uh, where I would love to see us go, is that um, I, I believe that we all um, see the results of what we sell um, and, and we see that as what we sell when um, I, I, I think we may have to drill down a little bit um, finer than that. Um, and so here's what, here's my, uh, uh, my viewpoint, my opinion on what we sell. And, and uh, this, this is where it's gonna get a little bit into the solution and the, and the marketing of it. But I believe there's two things that we sell in uh, behavioral health care and uh, substance use treatment specifically. I think the first thing that we sell is um, a safe place for medical detox. I believe that we sell that. 
um, and we can measure that. That is something that we can 100% uh, quantify and we can show the efficacy of that. Um, I believe that. And then uh, the second piece to it is um, the therapeutic alliance between patient and provider. See, I, I think those, that's what we sell in substance use treatment, the safe place for medical detox and the therapeutic alliance between patient and provider. So whenever those neural pathways are, are slowly trying to be repaired, um, the, it gives them another choice that whenever their brains are telling them, no, I want to go out and get loaded. No, I want to go back and do the same thing I'm doing because I'm so uncomfortable right now that they lean into that therapeutic alliance with the provider, with the therapist, with the alumni, with the peer support specialist, with the executive director, that they lean into that alliance instead of leaning into what their brain is telling them to do. I really believe that's what we sell in substance use treatment a safe place for medical detox and the therapeutic alliance between patient and provider. I believe that we can, um, we can effectively sell that, we can effectively quantify that, and we can effectively be reimbursed for that. Um, what happens after that, I think is, is really, it's not up to us. Um, it, it really isn't. So um, that's, uh, that's kind of my goal and my, um, uh, my belief and what I'm really passionate about for this next year is, uh, is really putting that uh, definition for what we sell out there. Um, and maybe we can unify behind that uh, and, and really start to work towards that goal of, of being transparent in that. So if those are the problems, right? We go back and we're, we're talking about this ethereal brain disease and neural pathways. If we have all of these different um, uh, roadmaps or, or, or paths to recovery and, and, and we have many different definitions of what we sell, what, what's the solution to that? You know, what, what, are we, what is the solution? And so that's where we, we're gonna start digging into um, this idea of, of uh, becoming a magician and, and transparency in marketing. It's all about trust. Um, so think about it in, in these terms and, and this, this therapeutic alliance and this, um, these neural pathways repairing, getting back to the frontal cortex, this is all magical, right? But, but just like a magician's trick, whenever you understand the trick behind it, it stops being magic and it starts being skill. You start to really see it. It loses all of its, um, the, you know, this, this uh, enigma around it. And it just becomes, wow, that person is really skilled at what they do. And so um, what I'm gonna talk about now and in getting into the solution of this is um, how we can really be transparent, um, how we can establish trust with the prospective client all the way through the marketing channels, the admission center, the um, all the way through into admission and, and then beyond. So um, I, I wanna present some solutions here and we're gonna go over that. Um, we're going to go over each one of these. Um, so let's dig into that and we'll get started here. So this is kind of the solution as I see it. We'll get into this. Um, so think about, I, I want us to first put ourselves in the mindset of the prospective patient um, that's coming in and, and, uh, and the client family who is looking for these resources, is looking for help and and, and think about where they're, um, where they're starting. Uh, just like me, whenever I came into this world, not knowing what to expect, what existed out there, um, I, I just went online and I looked and, and I tried to find out as much as I could about it. And so for all of us out there, for our websites, for our digital marketing um, presence out there, um, we need to be consistent all the way through. We need to build trust um, with the, the prospective patient, client, with the client family. We need to build trust and carry that trust all the way through. So we start that with um, consistency in our marketing materials. Um, I, I, I don't want to, uh, I, I, I worked for an organization that whenever, um, when we started, there were um, uh, five different levels of care represented within one organization. And there were five different brands. There were five different, um, uh, you know, storefronts for each of these uh, levels of care. And it really caused some, uh, it really caused some problems. So what we'd have is we'd have uh, somebody would call in 
and they would um, ask about the residential program and our admission staff would take them through the residential program uh, pieces and and um, and they would collect information on that. It was a great call and they would hang up and then they would call our PHP level of care program. And the same admissions person would pick up and then walk them through that process. And about halfway through the person would say, hey, didn't I just talk to you? How, how come you didn't mention this level of care, this program on our last call? And, and it immediately, it, it broke trust. Even though there was nothing wrong, even though there was no wrongdoing taking place, it broke trust between that prospective client. And, and our admissions team had to um, start explaining the different levels of care, not from an educational standpoint, but more as damage control. And when we're talking about the client, the client family who's operating out of the midbrain, everything is a threat. Um, it really puts us in the wrong foot. And, and you know, on a business level, it's it really uh, we struggle to convert that into an admission because we're already playing catch up. So what we did in that um, in that instance is we brought everything under one brand and we started to market um, every level of care as part of one umbrella and all the marketing materials from the, uh, the flyers that we made from the websites that we had for each level of care. They were all consistent and showed the same brand that was all part of the same family that just because it's a different level of care in a continuum of care doesn't mean it's a different program or different company. So consistency in materials is extremely important uh, to maintain that bond and that trust. Um, consistency along the pipeline. Um, I, I will say that from the, the digital presence that you have out there, the education around it, um, the, the, the um, I say the viewpoints, the, uh, the knowledge, the, the um, uh, details around your, um, around your programs needs to be consistent all the way down from what we put out front facing on the website to what your admissions team is saying all the way into what your clinician um, is saying on day one. Um, it's, it's extremely important um, to have that one common message. Uh, there, there, uh, there have been many instances where I've talked to a family. When, when um, uh, I used to do a family program at, at a program in Texas, and, and uh, uh, as I'm going in talking about the different levels of care, uh, I would have to set aside easily, you know, 15, 20 minutes to address questions from family members about how come I was told this and it's actually this. How come the business development rep or my rep there told me one thing, but the admissions rep told me another? How come your website says that we have an 18 hole golf course and whenever I get here with my golf clubs, it, there's no golf course, it's a little putt putt course. Like, why, why is that? Um, all of those things break trust along the pipeline. And when, when the person, the client, the client family is poised, ready to jump, ready to not go, go to treatment, but run from it, um, every time we break trust along that path, um, we give them a chance to, to leave and, and not get help. So consistency along the pipeline is extremely important. Um, Understand your program. Um, I think it's, it's extremely important to uh, understand what you're selling, uh, understanding your program, putting it out there, um, and being extremely transparent with that. Um, don't, don't sell something that you don't have. Don't advertise something you don't have. And I, and I don't mean that we don't put different um, education bits around that. I'm not saying that at all, but really understand your programming. Uh, this, this is another, uh, there's another talk in another area, of it, uh, and I won't get into this too much, but make sure that your business, your business development staff is extremely knowledgeable about your programming and, and has had a chance to, uh, to go through some parts of it um, that has seen it from a client's eye view. Uh, and understands what they're doing. It, it will empower them. It will give them the ability to connect with the prospective uh, client or patient, with their family. Uh, but also, it is a best practice, and, and it helps to maintain that um, that bond. Remember this: 
this therapeutic alliance that, that I think is so important that, that really um, is at the heart of, of what we do. Um, remember that, that it, is, uh, it can be established in the very beginning with a clear web presence that matches up with uh, a consistent business development interaction. Um, all of these can build that bond and build that, that therapeutic alliance because it's, it's uh, not only between an individual, it can also be uh, with a facility. And we see that uh, often. Um, so make sure that, that your uh, staff is trained and understands your program. Um, ask questions of your staff and your alumni. Uh, whenever it comes to, uh, to being transparent, and being uh, in, in creating this, this culture of trust. Uh, I think it's important for those of our, uh, our staff members and, and leadership that, um, uh, that are not familiar with uh, the type of recovery or modalities that, that you, are, um, you are selling and that you're presenting to clients is that they're involved and that they know. Um, and also I, I believe that your marketing departments it's very important for some of the larger organizations out there that your marketing departments um, are also educated. Um, one of the things that I, I got the opportunity to do at one of my stops along the way is I, I had the chance to uh, present every week to the marketing department. Um, we had a large marketing team um, that was out, uh, it was out doing the deal and really um, putting our, our face forward. And uh, one of the opportunities that the marketing director uh, at the time asked me to come in and and, uh, and to do education groups on um, uh, the uh, client's journey, on alumni, on um, recovery in, in general, um, so they could better understand the viewpoint from the client, from the, uh, from the client family. Um, and, and I think that was a, a very valuable tool uh, for them. I, they, they kept coming up and saying, thank you so much for this. It helped them to understand and, and put them in the, the shoes of the client, the client family. Uh, and the marketing uh, really benefited from that. Um, it was very transparent. It was very authentic. It came from a first person perspective um, from that education. So uh, ask questions for sure. Um, if you don't know and you don't have that experience, make sure that you're involved with your staff and your alumni and finding out. Um, it goes into educating the marketing department. It's uh, uh, you know, uh, it's really important for us to do that. Um, understanding your target audience. Uh, if you have not created personas yet uh, for your marketing, it's extremely important. Understand your target audience. Uh, one of the things that we do whenever we're onboarding a new client is really try to uh, understand them, understand the, um, the facility, understand the program, understand their target audience and their target market uh, before we do anything. Um, because it really does make a difference. Um, whenever, if, if our target audience is, um, uh, you know, young adult males, um, you know, between 18 and, and 30 years old, that, um, that messaging is gonna be very different than um, an LGBTQ uh, community um, uh, facility that, that really serves that community. It's going to be very different. And, and we need to know that. Um, I think sometimes we get in the habit of trying to be anything to everyone and, um, and, and that is not transparent. Um, that doesn't, um, and that, that doesn't really, um, uh, it's not really effective. And so understand your target audience, do some role plays. I, I'm a big fan of role plays in the marketing department. Um, uh, understand the different personas that you're putting uh, content out to, that you're writing to, that you're marketing to. So, um, so you can understand their challenges. Um, and so you're speaking directly to them. Uh, that, there's nothing worse, I think, than, than for your staff and your, um, and your marketing department to put out this really clear vision of who and what you are as a company. And then the person gets there and it doesn't match up. It doesn't match up with what they thought it was gonna be. 
Um, and so really understand the target audience that you're trying to get um, and, and you're trying to reach, really dig into what their challenges are, um, how they speak, what their language is. And then uh, it's extremely important to track the data. Um, I, I've worked with a lot of companies as they're um, uh, as they're growing. And, um, and one of the, the biggest challenges that they face is tracking their data, tracking where their referrals are coming from, tracking their market. And uh, um, I, I highly recommend starting it early on. Uh, we, we integrate with many different um, third-party services to be able to track the, um, uh, the referral or the, the admission from the very first contact on the website all the way through the uh, business development role, through the admissions funnel, and, and into the actual admission. And, and I cannot understate the importance of that because as, as I, I go speak in other industries and I go ask them about their, um, their client journey, uh, one thing is really apparent that in behavioral healthcare, we have a number of barriers um, along the way, the client journey is difficult. It is, um, it is a challenge to access our world and our services. And so with so many handoffs and so many barriers along the way, it is so important in behavioral health care for us to track the data all the way in so we can see where that's breaking down. Um, we see it on, on the digital front whenever we're tracking keywords. Uh, when we're seeing where those um, uh, where those ad admissions points are really taking, where are they going to the conversion page from? What keywords are leading more people to you? Um, it's really important to see that. Um, one of the things that that we talk about often on this is um, we know that that uh, certain long tail keywords like men's rehab program um, are really high converting keywords, um, even over an addiction treatment uh, center or addiction treatment, um, you're going to get more uh, calls, definitely more track, more, um, more traffic from addiction treatment. However, the, uh, the qualified calls that you get um, through men's rehab program or women's rehab program, the quality of that call is going to be much better, um, uh, much more suited to, uh, uh, to admission. And so we know that because we track the data without tracking that, if we were just looking at call volume, we would say uh, addiction treatment is fantastic. We should all be ranking for that keyword. Um, on, the, uh, on the business development front, if we're seeing a number of calls going into the business development rep um, and, and we're able to track the percentage of calls coming in versus the percentage of um, calls from BD to admissions, um, we can help to see over the course of a whole business development team we can really track and see the efficacy of each business development rep uh, and see where they may, may need training or uh, quite honestly, where they need promotion, where they need a, a pat on the back um, as long as we're tracking that data. And then uh, I can't tell you, um, I can't understate it enough. If you have a large call center, um, the, the importance of data tracking in the admissions, um, in the admissions call center, seeing uh, which admissions reps uh, are converting, which ones um, are struggling with that. Um, and we don't know unless we're tracking that data. So uh, it, it is such a data-driven thing with all of the, um, the barriers that face a person in getting into services, there needs to be tracking all the way into admission to see where they, they are. I, this is pie in the sky for another talk later on, but I also believe that tracking the data on discharge is just as important. Um, we'll get into that in another talk. All right, another thing is be unique. This is another solution and another way that we can uh, create and maintain that alliance between the client and client family uh, from the word go. Uh, we, we tend to work with a lot of companies in behavioral health care. And one of, the, uh, uh, one of the things that we ask for and that I ask for whenever I'm talking to them is that I, I need to know who you are. I need to know um, what your focus is. We talked earlier about the many different doorways into recovery. Um, I need to know if, if, if your program is 
a, a nuanced um, dual diagnosis program that can take mental health primary. I need to know that. Um, I need to know if your program is a recovery center that's very 12-step focused. I need to know that. Um, I want to know all of the things that make you different. Um, whenever I did business development and was traveling around and I go to, uh, go to different programs, um, one of the most important questions for me was who are you not appropriate for? Um, because we hear all the time, like, oh, we take this person, we're good for this and this and this. But I, I wanted to know, like, who are you not appropriate? Who do I not send? Because then that, that tells me more. Um, it, it lets me know where you fit in. And, and digitally, whenever we're creating a, a digital campaign and website for a company, I need to know where you're unique. I want you to stand out. Um, here's what I see a lot of times, though. Um, we work with a company that's coming in, they built this new uh, facility, they've got this mission and vision, they're excited, and they just want a website. And they go build us a website. And we ask about how you're, you're unique. And, and this is what I hear. I say, uh, I hear we do these different modalities, but what really separates us is our people. Um, I hear that over and over again. And, and that's great. I, if, if that's what you, you really want to, to do is, is showcase your people, um, that's good. I'm going to get into that later. There's a way that you can be unique showing that, but we, it takes a lot of work. And so whenever I'm asking you to be neat, unique, I really want to create a, a, a very targeted, detailed web presence for you. That's not like anyone else. Okay. That doesn't make you look like everyone else. That's what we want. And so, um, I'm asking that that's part of the solution. It gives the client and the client family, a clear idea of who you are. So really um, identify those differentiators for you um, in your target market between yourself and other facilities. Um, what makes you different? And let's exemplify that. Um, too often, I find um, we get into this scarcity mindset because we, we have this abstract ethereal magic out there that we're marketing. And uh, we get into this scarcity mindset that we need to try to take everybody and get everybody help in our facility. And, and, um, and I think that, that we, we do ourselves a disservice by trying to take everyone instead of being really unique and targeting a market, um, targeting an audience and helping that, that audience. They're, um, uh, don't try to be everything to everyone, be unique. Um, the about us page is key. So think back to, to the idea of, or my, my hypothesis that I put out there that what we sell really is a, a safe place for medical detox and, um, and a therapeutic alliance between patient and provider while the brain heals. Um, if that's our product is part of that, that alliance between patient and provider, um, then the about us page is key. It is a huge focal point. Um, here are some ways that you can accentuate that. And I, I'm going to talk about the therapeutic value of it, but also I'll talk to you about the market, uh, the marketing value of it. Um, uh, if you, if, if on your website and all your marketing materials, if you're putting out your, um, your clinical director, who they are, um, if you're putting out your staff and you're putting pictures that the clients can see, that the families can see, you're putting full bios um, along with um, uh, personal passion statements, um, mission statements on there. Uh, you're, you're giving the client and the client family an opportunity to establish that trust um, and that therapeutic alliance before they even meet the person. It's extremely important. If you don't have it on there, there's, there's no way for them to, um, to build that trust initially. Um, and you're already starting behind um, in, in, that, in that effort therapeutically. Um, another thing is, is on the business front, um, it's also important because there is SEO value in the About Us page, okay? And I'm going to talk about this. Remember, this is separate from the therapeutic benefit. This is a, a, a marketing benefit. And here's something that I, I recommend that, that, uh, that everybody do out there uh, with their staff is, is I, I think that 
you're especially for your leadership clinical staff, have them do video, um, have a video bio. Um, it, it will take all of five minutes for them to just sit down and talk about why they're passionate about what they do. It gives the audience a chance to connect with the person that's actually talking face to face. Um, and then here's the marketing key. Um, this is where it turns into SEO gold is to, to transcribe that video underneath it and put those, uh, put that interview into words. Um, you will have a automatic um, a new article. You will uh, rank for some, some keywords that otherwise maybe you wouldn't. Um, and it's a very low, uh, uh, low cost, low intense way of, um, of helping your keywords and, and your SEO strategy. So um, the About Us page is key. Also, it is the most visited page on your website. So it is key. Uh, really invest in the About Us page. Um, let's see here. Um, we talked a little bit about this before. Define your language for your target market. Um, I think it is important to talk about, um, you know, uh, do you talk in terms of client? Do you talk in terms of patient? Um, do you talk in terms of member? Do you talk in terms of guest? Define that language for your target market and stick with that. Um, uh, also, um, understand that when, when we're, we're putting SEO assets out there, we, we have a persona in mind on your education pages. We're talking to family members. We're talking to people, uh, that are not educated in this area, in this field. And so, uh, if, if you're putting a blog out about, um, let's see if we want to go into the efficacy of, um, uh, let's see the efficacy of, of CBT with substance use disorder clients. Um, the problem is, is that no, uh, family member is searching for that. No family member is, is looking for that particular language. They're not looking for substance use disorder. We talk in those terms because that's clinically, that is exactly what we're dealing with. However, um, that is not what um, uh, you know, mom and dad are looking for. That's not what the family member is looking for. They're looking for uh, you know, drug rehab. Um, they're looking for terms like, this is one of, my, um, one of my favorites. They're looking for, am I an addict? Now, we don't like that term. I, I, as a person in long-term recovery, I'm not a big fan of the label. Um, addict. However, um, our audience that we are trying to connect with and, and get services in front of, they are looking up, am I an addict? They're looking up that term. So make sure that, that just because we don't use that uh, terminology whenever we're talking clinically back and forth, that we're not actually putting that out there um, for people that are searching for it. Understand your target market and define that language for them. Um, another thing is being transparent with locations. Um, one of the things that, that we uh, recommend and that we've seen is that when you have different locations, make sure that you uh, put those locations out there, that you talk about those different locations. And we would actually recommend that you have different websites for each location. Um, uh, there was a, a case study that we did where we compared two equal size companies with equal uh, locations in similar markets. And uh, we, we did one, um, one company with one single website with different pages for the locations underneath it. And we did uh, the other company with multiple websites. Um, and the one with multiple websites, websites saw a 30% increase in traffic. That's, uh, that's pretty substantial. Um, it, also, uh, it also helps for the client whenever they're looking for solutions, it helps them find them uh, in, in the near me, um, look, cause we all look for, you know, restaurant near me, haircut near me. Um, uh, and, and what we're seeing now is that move towards uh, drug rehab near me, <laughs> you know, in, uh, IOP sometimes near me, uh, you know, those are things that are, are becoming more important. And so being transparent with your different locations and, and having different sites for those locations, uh, is extremely important. Um, being a digital resource, um, just because 
you don't necessarily offer one of those doorways into uh, a recovery experience doesn't mean that you can't talk about it. Um, we, we sometimes are that educational resource for a family member that's looking for help. And uh, there's a way that you can put out um, in the marketplace, you can talk about the different doorways into recovery. Um, as long as, as you're not saying that, that you have equine therapy when you don't, right? Um, as long as you're saying that, um, yes, we have, uh, you know, we offer wilderness programs um, uh, or we don't, but here's the efficacy of them. Um, you can talk about those and educate the general public because your, your website may be the first stop for an individual on their recovery journey. And so don't be afraid to be an educational resource. Talk about where you're different. Talk about the many different doorways and how there is no um, necessarily right or wrong, that there's a, it's finding that pathway that's right for that individual. So we definitely can be that in this space. And uh, keeping it simple. Um, your About Us page, Going back up to number nine, your About Us page is going to have plenty of clinical terms. Your clinicians are going to talk about it, um, and that's okay. You're, you're, many referral sources and other clinicians are going to go are going to the About Us page. But in your blogs, in your um, educational resources, remember to keep it simple. We live in this world. We are very familiar with uh, different modalities, um, and and. I saw this in, um, in psychotherapy that back in the, in the 80s, there was this move towards legitimacy in psychotherapy. And the way they, they made that move is they really latched on to the, um, they latched on to the modalities that they were using. And it gave them, um, it gave them clinical legitimacy uh, where otherwise before they, it was maybe more abstract. And, and I think that we are starting to see that in substance use treatment. We're seeing um, uh, people uh, in different programs latch on to the modality. Uh, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. It goes, being unique is good. Um, and, but understanding that whenever we're talking to the prospective client and patient, they do not understand um, the brain disease right off the bat. They don't understand the how therapy works. They don't understand um, the different dynamics in, in group therapy. And so we need to uh, keep it very simple um, for them and, and bring them along an educational journey um, instead of just going extremely clinical right out of the gates. Um, so definitely keep it simple. Finally, um, a solution is having a clear call to action um, in your marketing efforts. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that, but I always recommend on your, on your websites and, and any digital presence out there, make sure that you have a call to action clearly uh, um, visible at all times. Um, have it in, in the header that scrolls down, have it in a sidebar um, to where there's always a clear call to action it, this does a number of things on the um, on the human front. <laughs> when we're talking about the patient, when when it's time, it's time. Whenever they've they've gotten to that point where they've they've had enough, they've had enough education, they've had enough awareness, and and they're ready to go. Like we want that call to action to be right there. Like call now, click here. Like we want that call to action to be right there. Also on the business front, whenever we start talking about the marketing side of it, um, we want to see what page in particular, what part of the page is resonating with the client. And we can see that if there is a clear call to action being displayed at all times, we can track that and see what, um, what page were they on? This page converts at a higher rate. This is where people are going this is where they're clicking, and it helps us to be more efficient um, with our uh, with the clients, uh, with the company. So, um, having a clear call to action, I think, is extremely important. So, I, I know that was a, a, an awful lot of information. 
that we went through there. Um, I, I would like to uh, kind of open it up if you have any questions um, to go ahead and start putting them in the Q&A now uh, so we can go over some of these. Um, let me see, as, as, as we, we go through that and as people put questions in, um, I do want to I do want to say that uh, we have a big job in behavioral health care. We really are marketing magic. Um, this is not something that we can uh, go out and and intangibly put our hands on. That we are offering a uh, a life saving service um, that that gives us all of the answers that uh, that you guys put earlier on and what we sell. Um, we really are, and so I, I I'm very passionate about presenting the information, I would really encourage you to take this back to your facilities and let's dig down and get really clear on what we sell in addiction treatment. Let's really solidify that. So um, if we have a clear picture of what we're selling, that we are all behind, that we can all um, support, then we're one step closer to coming up with an outcome measure of that product. Um, we also are one step closer to getting a, um, a real reimbursement metric from the payers. I, I've been in conversations over the years and, and rooms over the years where it's been pre pretty heated between uh, providers of these services and the payers. Um, and, and the problem is, is that we, we really don't have a clear product that we're selling that we're asking for reimbursement for. Um, and so uh, it, it gets heated. When it's subjective, it gets heated. And so uh, my hope is that we can come together, really define what we sell, um, and, and move the industry forward in that way. Um, so let's see, I have a couple of, uh, uh, a couple of questions here. Give me just a second. Um, okay, so here's one uh, from David. I'm gonna read this. Uh, it says, the majority of our clients are referred by a professional or community agency provider. Do you design a website with both general public, consumer, and professional referral sources in mind? Yes, absolutely. Um, that's where the relationship with the About Us page um, and the relationship with the educational part of it um, plays hand in hand. Believe it or not, your About Us page is the, uh, where your referral sources are going. Um, and I'm talking about the professional referral source, the therapist. And if the majority of your um, uh, referrals are coming from uh, private practice clinicians, therapists, other uh, facilities, um, uh, B2B channels, then I, I would recommend really focusing on the, uh, your staff pages, on really building out those bios, um, keeping them current, doing video in those. Um, I think it's very. Uh, I think it's very important to do that. That speaks to the clinical side, the clinical aspect, um, the uh, educational resources. Uh, that's where you can hit the other other aspect and go uh, direct to consumer. Um, we we are so um, different in this space that uh, in behavioral healthcare, your digital assets that you're putting out there are really the main B 2 C channel. Um, we also play around in, in uh, I say play around, we also work in the, the dental um, market as well. And, uh, and we do um, websites, SEO and PPC for uh, dental practices and DSOs. And, um, and theirs is, is totally different. They are so consumer driven, um, uh, word of mouth driven. Uh, they have many direct to consumer channels um, that that their, their web marketing is important, but um, it's a different tone. Um, in behavioral healthcare, uh, the consumer is going online first. That's where they're at. And so even if, uh, I would say this to answer your question, even if the majority of your referrals are coming from B2B channels and from the, um, the uh, referring clinicians, that um, really building out an educational uh, part of your website Will increase your um, uh, will increase your admissions coming from the, the direct consumer. Um, so that may be an area of focus uh, for you guys. Let's see here. Um, uh, 
Um, I have a, um, uh, I have a, a question about testimonials. Um, testimonial works, um, but patients refuse to share them uh, unless we're hiding their faces and changing, um, changing voices and, and that kind of thing. Um, uh, and, and it has to do with social media. Um, I will tell you this, that Google reviews are extremely important. Um, and so anytime you have somebody with a, a positive experience, it is 100% recommended and okay to reach out to the client and to the family of the client and ask them to leave positive reviews. We've done uh, review campaigns before for facilities and they're extremely effective. Um, and they don't require video, they don't require audio, they just require uh, someone going on and writing a testimonial. And a lot of times it's a family member and those are extremely effective because remember that the families are, are more than likely gonna be the audience that you're talking to on that Google review. Um, it, it's extremely important to have those on there. When it comes to social media, um, there, social media is extremely important for branding. Um, uh, we, we don't see a lot of healthcare decisions being made based on social media. So the ROI is much more nuanced whenever it comes to social media and social media ads. Um, it's, it's much more um, uh, in the details about it. Um, it. It definitely creates and helps to perpetuate that bond between the, um, uh, the possible client and the, the treatment facility. Um, if they're, uh, if they see, um, if they see an, an ad online and that ad matches up consistently with their Google search, uh, result that shows their, um, Google ad at the top that shows their Google, my business on the right hand side, it shows them in the map pack and that shows them as one of the top three search results underneath that. If all of those things add up and come together to point towards your facility, and then that message is consistent all the way through the admissions process into the very first group, you not only are gonna be guaranteed a, a client, but you're gonna have an alumni that will preach that, um, that will talk about the efficacy of your program, and then hopefully uh, you, know, you can hire them later on. That's, a, that's another talk for later, but, um, but it's all of those pieces that come together uh, and, and to create this clear picture. So I would say, yes, testimonials definitely work. Um, focus on them on the, the, the Google reviews um, and, and really um, I wouldn't worry about them so much on, the, uh, on social media, but just having a consistent um, uh, brand, consistent social media presence that points back to the site. Um, let's see. Uh, another one about us. Uh, do we have the doctors talk about themselves inside of uploading their CV? The, the, the more that you can put on there, the better. Um, the more you can put on there, the better. Uh, they, they will speak clinician to clinician, unlike any of us can, right? Um, and, and yet, if you can have video of them on there and then transcribe the video underneath that, it hits on so many different levels. Um, we do hear sometimes that it is, uh, it is um, uh, labor intensive. Uh, I will throw a quick plug in there that if you have a, a third party vendor like Greenscape Marketing or if you have a, um, a marketing department, it's well worth it uh, to keep those um, About Us pages updated with, um, with video, with transcription going on. It's, it's well worth it. The, um, uh, the results from it, will far outweigh the, um, uh, the workload of doing that. Let's see here, let's see if we have any more. Um, as we go through. And yes, um, someone asked if we can get a copy of the recording. Absolutely, absolutely we can. Okay, let's see, wonderful. So that was question and answer piece. Um, I do want to put this information up here. Um, and, if, and don't forget, if you have a couple more questions, we have a, a few more minutes. But I, I do want to put this up there that um, if you guys are in Baltimore this weekend, uh, I'm doing a, a, a panel talk with a couple of uh, other industry professionals. And, 
and we're going to be talking about the speaking the language and and mapping that that uh, uh, roadmap from patient to provider. Uh, we're going to be doing that on Saturday morning uh, live uh, at the uh, INCAD East here in Baltimore. And uh, I'd love to have you out as part of this conversation. Uh, I, I will tell you, I would really um, invite you all to have this conversation within your uh, organization. Let's talk about the magic. Let's talk about what we're selling. And, and let's, let's give away the secret and let's show people how we do the magic trick. Let's talk about the service that we provide, not the results of it later on down the road. Um, last thing I'll say is I bang this drum and, and we look at this. The last thing I'll say is that um, uh, I was at a talk and, and, uh, and, and Norman Huffman uh, is, is uh, someone I have a lot of respect for that, that did a lot of work in, in outcomes. And uh, uh, he posed the question, he said, if one of the metrics for success that insurance companies um, are uh, measuring us by are, uh, does the client have a job? If one of these metrics is the ability to hold down a job, if that's what they're measuring our, our, our treatment on, shouldn't we be getting reimbursed for job training? And that got me thinking, see, we, that, that's never going to happen because we're not selling job training. That's not what we sell. What we sell is a safe place for medical detox and the therapeutic alliance between patient and provider. So as the brain is healing, that person can lean into the relationship and do something different to where they have a choice rather than leaning into that old behavior pattern. Um, so let's sit with that. Let's take that back and let's turn that. And uh, by no means is, is my way the right way and all that good stuff. But I, I really would like to, uh, to have that conversation over the coming years and, and see if we can't drill down into one specific thing that we sell so we can quantify it, so we can get paid for it. And so above everything else, so the patient understands it. Um, so with that, let me make sure that I, I don't have any more, um, any more questions. Doesn't look like that. Feel free to reach out, out to me um, if you'd like to talk about how to, um, to really make your uh, digital presence unique, um, how to carry a message to your prospective market, or you would like to continue this conversation, the broader conversation about um, our industry as a whole, please reach out to me. That's my cell number on there. That's my uh, email. And if you find yourself in Annapolis, Maryland, looking for a cup of coffee with somebody, please reach out and say hello. And with that, uh, I hope that you guys have a fantastic week. And uh, we sure appreciate y'all joining us today. Thank you.